in ancient times, a lot of times people would sit around a campfire and they would take a stick and draw things in the sand as they tried to explain some of the ideas and concepts uh, that they were trying to get across to other people. Uh, today, we're using a whiteboard and a marking pen, but the idea is pretty much the same. And we're going to discuss further the idea of managing and understanding our awareness, uh, kind of being aware of our awareness, if you will, and also being aware and managing our presence. And this is a very important thing to be aware of uh, if you really want to know the way of things and to be aware not only uh, of your own presence and awareness but to understand how that interacts with the other animals that are out in the field. Um, and so we're going to give a model here and this particular model or scenario um, is going to take the awareness in the visual, the sense of smell, and hearing into account and show some of the ways in which that would work. And this model is intended to give you uh, a working knowledge of this stuff so that you can use it in your own hiking in the desert. So let's get started. We'll start with the same kind of scenarios that this is a uh, relatively flat field in the desert and we're looking down on it. And we have our person starting out much the same and they're going to be going along this path. However, in this uh, scenario, we're going to have a little hill. It's going to be kind of a unique hill, but nevertheless, we will make this hill. We'll say it's uh, 15 feet tall, about 30, 40 feet long. Kind of a little odd little hill. And we have our person heading off this way. And we'll have a deer decides to stay right about here and he is 10 foot above the surrounding ground and on the other side we'll say that this is the center line of this little hill the ridge line so he's on the opposite side of our person who's walking through the desert and he's up about 10 feet so our person really can't see him he's he's behind the hill uh, but our deer has a very good visual awareness out this way because he's 10 foot up. And he's also going to have a good set of hearing in this same area. He's going to be able to hear with, he's got very good ears, the deer has very good ears, and he'll be able to hear anything coming this way from him, coming to him or going away for that matter. Um, so, he has both a visual and he has an audible hearing awareness. But the hearing awareness might actually extend out somewhere maybe like this. It actually goes on the other side of this hill. It's actually more of a, a circle with uh, ending up kind of going out like that. Now, if our person here is talking or walking on some very loud type of ground or something like that, our deer, if he comes up into here, will become aware of his presence. Uh, at which time, he'll become aware that there's something there, but he really won't know what it is. Uh, we could run the same scenario over here. Let's say there's a coyote over here, and he's sneaking along through the brush, and he makes some noise. The deer's going to become aware of him as far as if there's a sound. So what is he going to do? He's going to focus his vision to that area. He's going to focus in and he's now applying another level of awareness and from that he might be able to pick up that coyote. He didn't see him. He, the coyote was actually in his visual field but he wasn't registering. But 
now that he heard him, now he applies this other uh, level of awareness and he picks him up. Now, the deer, of course, has one other sense of awareness that's worthy to talk about that we humans don't really have, or certainly not at the level that the deer has, uh, and that's a sense of smell. And if we have, if we put into our scenario here a wind going crossways here, it, let's say a nice four or five mile an hour crosswind, our person, or it could be a coyote or a mountain lion or what have you, is leaving a scent trail and he's pulling this scent trail across like a curtain. And our deer has an awareness, a scent, maybe four or five hundred yards out. Hard to say. Depends on the wind and the topography and how good uh, the, the deer, that particular deer, really can smell. So when this person comes across here, when he gets to this point, that deer is going to be aware of it. And I say that deer, it could be a coyote. A coyote would become aware of this person crossing. And I don't really know why this is. I have some theories, uh, perhaps someone knows. Uh, but that deer, when he smells a person, is going to know and, and register a predator. He's going to know that that's a dangerous uh, animal, just like he would know it was a coyote or a bobcat or a mountain lion, uh, and do whatever it takes, whether he's going to leave or stay still or what have you. He's going to do whatever is best or whatever he thinks is best. And so our person here walking across this way to be aware of the situation, he needs to be aware that he's dragging this curtain of scent along this way. If there was a mountain, say, over here, that deer would not become aware of it because the breeze has taken his scent down this way and would never register the person on scent. Now he might register or detect something by sound, but he's not going to get scent. So if you're aware of that, if you're aware that you're drawing this curtain of scent across the, the plane, and that hearing is a, a 360 degree phenomenon as far as awareness, uh, although it can change in its intensity given bushes and mountains and walls and rocks and things like that. Uh, but you need to be aware of these kind of scenarios and, and complexities. Uh, for instance, if you were looking for a deer, or a kai, or any wildlife actually, you might take along this path and come up and come here and then walk, rather than walk through here, because you, this, you would never see them, they would know of you, and you wouldn't know of them. So it begins to change the way you walk. When you become aware and directing your own awareness and understanding your own presence, it begins to change the way you walk and where you walk in the desert. And that is when you begin to really see and learn some of the many interesting things uh, that you can experience. And that's kind of the end of this uh, scenario and we can continue this on another lecture. And with that I thank you.